Today's video, we're going to be looking at fixing, expanding unallocated drive space on Windows 11. And this is for those of you that might have some extra space on your drive that you've cleared up since, and you just want to expand your C drive, but it won't let you. And I'll show you guys what I mean here. So we'll go first into the file explorer here, and we'll go to this PC and we'll see that we have 50 gigs of space here. Well, I know there is more space on this drive. So if we right click on the windows icon, hit disk management. Now we have our 50 gigs here and we also have 35, which we should be able to expand to our C drive. Now, if we open this up just a little bit bigger here. Now, if we right click on our C drive, we should be able to extend volume or normally you should be able to, but you're going to see that it is grayed out and that is super annoying. And the reason behind this is because there is a recovery partition that sits in between the unallocated and our C drive itself. So what we need to do is either delete or, you know, move this recovery partition on the other side of this unallocated space so that we can expand our C drive out. And that's what this video is all about. We'll show you two different methods of doing this, one involving only Microsoft tools and the other is a third party only tool. And the third party solution is a lot more simple, a lot less of a headache and all that good stuff. But I will highly recommend before you guys proceed on this to make sure that you do a data backup. If you have any important data that you think you are not willing to lose, make sure to back it up. While there are very minimal areas that you can make mistakes and delete any data, there is still always a possibility. And I always highly recommend making sure that you have your data backed up. So with that out of the way, let's move on to our third party solution first, which should make this a process very easily. So I'm going to minimize that. Now I'm simply just going to go to Google and type in mini partition tool and we'll hit enter. And the one we're looking for is this mini tool partition wizard. And now I'll put the links in the description below as always. So have no fear there. And then once we're here, we're just going to hit download partition wizard and we want the free edition. Now it's going to take a second to download. It should be fairly quickly and we'll just run the installer hit. Yes. We will hit English, which is perfectly fine. Now it's going to ask you if you want to try the pro trial for free. I'm just going to say continue installing free edition and hit next. Now it's going to say, do you want the partition wizard? Yes. Disk data backup and restore. I don't need this. And I also don't want to participate in the customer experience, which is totally fine. We will just keep the top one checked and hit next again, default install area. And then at the end, it should say launch mini partition wizard. We'll just, we'll go ahead and hit finish. It's probably going to open up a page, try to get you to buy the pro version, but we can just exit out of this for now. We'll exit out of this message and perfect. Now we can see the same information as well. Again, here we see our NTFS drive uh, with our 50 gigs. We see our recovery drive and then we also see our unallocated space. So to fix this, all we have to do, uh, let me make this a little bit bigger for you guys. We're just going to simply click on this right here and then we want to move or resize partition. Now we want to move it all the way to the right and you don't have to change anything else. We'll just hit OK. You will see that it's now it now puts it on the right and the unallocated is right next to the C drive, which is exactly what we want. After we have done that, we have verified that's where we want to move it. All we have to do is hit apply. It's going to say apply pending changes. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted to do. It's going to do its thing. Move it over for us. Um, and everything should be good. Um, and now we'll go back into our disk management and we can see that the recovery partitions on the right side, we have our unallocated space. We have our C drive. We can now extend the volume from here, or we can continue to use the tool and we can extend the partition of the unallocated. We'll just crank that all the way up. We could hit okay. And then again, you just hit apply. Do you want to apply the changes? Yes. Hit okay. Now in the now in the disk management screen, you're going to see, yes, everything is good. Everything is full. If we go into our file explorer here, now, if we go into the file explorer under this PC, we see that we have 84.2 gigs of information that we can store on here. We have 56.4 gigs free. It's really this easy just to do this with this piece of software. Honestly, I cannot stress this enough. This software is a lifesaver. It can do this in like no time flat. But those of you that want to do it on the hard mode, um, let's switch over and I will reset this VM so that we can see this. But if you do you guys need to get out of this program, just feel free to hit quit and everything should be fine. Nothing changes or anything like that. We've already made the changes and all that good stuff. So I'm going to reset this PC back to where it was and then we'll make the same attempt, but only using Microsoft tools and you'll see how much more difficult this becomes. 
All right, now we see that we have here, we are reset back to where we were. We have our recovery drive in between our unallocated. So what we need to do first up is open up PowerShell as administrator. So we'll simply run this as administrator and hit yes. I will throw this in the right side here. And the first command that we wanna do is reagent C slash info. And we're gonna see that the recovery environment is enabled, which is perfect. Uh, that's what we intended to have it do. So we'll type in reagent C slash disable. Should take a second. You should get operation successful, which is perfect. That means that command worked perfectly. You can run the previous command again to info, and we will now see that the RE status is disabled, which is all in as intended. So up next, we're gonna launch a disk part. And this is an area where you really can do a lot of damage if you're not very careful. So make sure to follow directions of very, very carefully here. Otherwise you can wind up deleting the wrong thing. So first up, we're gonna do list disk. And this is gonna show you all the disks that you have. We can again verify this under the disk management section as well. We see disk zero and disk one, perfect. We want disk zero. So we'll hit select disk space zero. And you can see it's now selected. Now, if we type in list disk again, it'll actually put a little asterisk showing that's where we're actually selected currently, which if you wanna double check, feel free to do so. Next, we're going to do list partition. And here we're gonna see that we have our recovery drive, our primary, our reserved in our system. What we wanna get rid of is actually the recovery drive. So what we'll do is select partition for and you can see that it is the 642 megs, even though it says the 49 gig offset, don't worry about that. You wanna match up the size for size. So if yours is on a different partition, feel free to do that one, but do double check that it lines up with what you're, what you're seeing up here as well. So we'll do select partition four. Again, we can hit the up arrow twice, hit list partition. It'll put a little asterisk showing that we're on partition four if you really wanna double check because the next command is what really can delete a lot of stuff. So up next, we're gonna type in delete partition override and then hit enter and you're gonna see that recovery partition go poof. Now up next, we can exit out of disk part because we no longer need it and we can also clear this out. So we'll just have a fresh screen. All right, so on the unallocated space, Instead of just extending the volume right now, we wanna rebuild our recovery. So we're gonna to have to do that first. And I want you to do a right click, new simple volume, hit next. So for here, I'm gonna simply shrink the volume down to 35,000, giving me about 1400 megs in space, hopefully. Um, it doesn't always equal one for one. Sometimes you get a little less space. So I definitely recommend doing about 1500 off of whatever your current volume size is for the new recovery drive. Um, a recovery drive should be anywhere from 600 megs to about three gigs. It just kind of depends, um, but I feel like 1500 is usually good enough. So after that, we'll hit next. We'll allow it to sign a uh, drive letter here. And then for the volume label, I'm going to just type in temp, temp fix, and then we'll hit next and finish. That is perfect. Now we've created that temp fix because we may or may not need this. And if we don't need it, getting rid of it is super simple. So moving on, we'll go to our last little bit of unallocated space, right click, new simple volume, hit next, use all the space, don't adjust this one, and we'll hit next. So we're gonna assign it a drive letter initially. After that, we'll just remove that drive letter, but we need it to be able to move files in and out of this folder just initially so that we can rebuild a recovery. But after that, we'll just hit next. And the new volume, we are going to type in recovery because that's what we want and hit finish. Now it's done building that. Now we need to make reference of this F drive is what it assigned it as a drive letter. So up next on PowerShell, we'll do make dir F colon or colon a slash, and then we'll do recovery windows RE and then hit enter. And you should see that kind of output. If you get any kind of error, it means you did something wrong and try to reference back and figure out what might've went wrong. If there's a typo, if you have the wrong drive letter, anything like that. That means our folder structure is now built out, which is perfect. Up next is where we can actually look and see if we have to do something a little bit more difficult or easier. So first up, we're gonna do dir C drive, Windows, System32, Recovery, and then actually just hit enter after that point. And you're looking to see if you have a winre.wim file in here. If you don't, 
it's a bummer. It's going to be a little bit more difficult here. But if you guys do, all you have to do to move that over is copy space C space Windows system 32 recovery. And then you would type in Windows REWIM. And then you would match that up with your folder that you just created the F drive recovery Windows RE like that. And then you hit enter and it would just copy over that file. Since mine does not have that file, you're unlucky, unfortunately, to do this. So we're going to have to do something a little bit different. First up, you're going to have to go onto Microsoft's website and download the latest Windows 11 ISO. If you don't know how to do this, all my previous Windows install videos that I've done all show how to download this thing. I will also have a link in the description below. But once it's downloaded, right click on the ISO and hit mount. Now this will take probably a minute to mount up and you're gonna get a little security bubble here that we'll have to accept once it comes up. So this is that security warning. Do you wanna open this file? We do wanna open it and we'll just hit enter and that is perfect. Now we also want to make reference to where this got mounted. So you can see this is a DVD drive and it got mounted to the G letter. So perfect. That's what we needed to know. Up next, we're going to need to type in dism git dash wim info space wim file g sources install dot wim. It should look something like that and we'll hit enter. What we're looking for is what index number matches our version of Windows. Now, if you don't know what version of Windows you are, hit the start menu, type in WinVer and hit enter. It should bring up a screen to tell you what version you're on. And also you can see here that I'm on Windows 11 Pro operating system. So it says just Pro, that means no N, no education, no workstations, just the basic Pro. And we need to make reference of index six because that's the one we need to use. So we are going to need to make a folder real quick before we proceed on our temp fix partition. So we'll do hit make dir, and then we'll do E and then we'll just call it WIM temp and hit enter. And we'll again, see that screen. It created the folder, which is perfect. Next, we move on to typing here. Let me get on the screen here. So we'll do dism slash apply image slash image file and it will be that G. So we'll do sources install dot whim slash index. And this is going to be where you make a reference of which index number you used space apply dir. And then we'll do the E drive because that's where we just did this folder whim temp and then the quiet switch and we'll hit enter. It's going to do its thing for a little bit. This part has to extract about 15, 20 gigs of information. That's why we put it on this little partition because deleting this information gets protected and it's super annoying to do. But if we have it on a partition, we can just blow out the partition and all the data that's referenced on it super easily and then expand our C drive from there after we've extracted the one file that we need to to our recovery drive. So let it do its thing. It'll probably take, I would say about five, 10 minutes to complete. And then once it's done, you should see another screen that just says the PSC Windows System 32 with the blank after it. So we'll wait for that to pop up. And we can see now it's completed. It's sitting back here at the blanking cursor, which is perfect. So next we need to do is copy. And then in quotes, we're going to go to our temp folder that we built for our temp fix. We'll do E drive and then we'll hit our folder. We'll type in Windows system 32 recovery and then we want the windows rewim leave that in quotes and then space it out and then we're going to add it to our new recovery partition so this is going to be recovery windows re and then something like that is what you're looking for and then simply hit enter it should copy over the file we can even open up a new file explorer to just double check that it built over here we can see that we now have a WinREWIM file, which is absolutely all we needed. All that's left now is to enable our recovery partition information stuff again. So what we do is we do reagent C set reimage path, and then we will point to that new F drive windows RE and hit enter. You should see operations successful. Then we type in reagent C enable. Again, should see operation successful. Reagent C 
info. And now we should see that it is enabled, which is perfect. That's all we needed to do on that front. Our recovery partition is back and active and all enabled and all that good stuff. So we can actually get out of this screen now. And what's left is we have to blow out this partition because currently it has a whole bunch of just junk now of a full Windows install. So we don't want that. We want to have the space back. So now we can just simply click on our E drive, right click, hit delete volume and hit yes. Then after that, right click on your C drive, extend volume, hit next, next, finish, and boom, just like that, that is all done. So lastly, we wanna remove the drive letter from our recovery partition. So we right click, change drive letter and paths. And all you have to do is hit remove, hit yes, and boom, just like that is back to hidden. You shouldn't see it, it shouldn't be annoying or anything like that. And the only last piece is to unmount this drive or ISO. So all we have to do is right click, eject, and boom, just like that, we are back in action. Uh, if we go back to our PC, we have our 55 gigs free. We don't have anything mounted. I would definitely recommend if you guys are short on space, going back in your downloads and deleting out this ISO as well, because it is a rather large file. And like I said, it's really that easy. This is more of the hard mode. I would really call it super easy. Um, definitely that third party tool, we can get you up and running in about just a couple minutes versus maybe what, 10, 20 minutes it takes to do this other way. But it's good to have this knowledge as well. So be sure to just try it out. I would definitely recommend doing this in a VM if you guys are comfortable with that rather than playing with it on your main PC. But if you guys need to do this and you don't feel comfortable downloading that third party tool, you guys now know how to do this the right way, the Microsoft way, whatever you want to call it without utilizing third party tools to do this for you. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully this helps out some of you out there. I it definitely been something that I've struggled with in the past, so I thought I would do a video you on it if you guys like comment and subscribe down below it always helps out the channel and i'll see you guys in the next one